into the tank is a brand seeking to be a better fit for all. Hi Sharks, I'm Sharice and this is my wife Vicki. We're from San Diego, California seeking $250,000 for 5% equity in our company. When you go clothes shopping, most stores have a men's section and a women's section. But Sharks, neither of those sections work for me. The women's section tends to have more form-fitting clothes, which I like. But I don't. And while I love the men's style, those clothes are just not made for my body shape. Sharks, she's got a booty. True <laughs> story. <laughs> We're all unique individuals, and we believe the shopping experience should be based on style preference and body type, not on gender. That's why we decided to forge the future of fashion with Dapper Boy, a genderless and size inclusive apparel line made to fit you both inside and out. Join Dapper Boy in being part of a revolutionary solution that will bring confidence within us all. After all, is it about time that we all fit in? <laughs> Sharks, in front of you, some Dapper Boy clothes we'd love for you to check out. Good for you guys. Thank Good you. For you. I'm really intrigued. It's I mean, do you shirt. sell direct to consumer? Because yes. you're asking retailers to create a third category, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously we're not opposed to creating this third category or not. But right now we feel like direct-to-consumer is the way to go. Especially, mm -hmm. you know, with being mission-driven brand and just being easy to shop online. Good looking stuff. So are you blowing it up on social or how are you getting the word out to your community? Yeah, so Facebook and Instagram mostly. Um, we're excited to start dabbling to some influencer marketing as well. How do you come up with this? I used to shop in the women's department, and those styles were just never for me. I never felt confident. I felt frumpy. I felt unseen. But we started Dapper about seven years ago now, and literally it came from a pair of jeans. Jeans was the first thing I tried on in the men's department, and it was the scariest thing to go to that section, you know, okay. to maybe be judged. Um, but it was exactly what I wanted to be. It was like the confidence I wanted. That was my style. You know, it was emotional. But years later, I realized those clothes just never fit my body type. And so we, we saw a bunch of people just like myself with the same exact problem. So I guess that your sales are less than a million. Please, I think they're let over me be wrong. Two. Let okay, so lifetime sales in the last seven years, we've done about 3.5. And actually, the way we've run our good business is uh, pre-order campaigns. That's very good. So we bootstrapped the brand. And last year, we were at 1.2. Yeah! Oops. Yeah. I got you. So why don't we get into the margins? What do you, uh, what's an average margin? Take this uh, shirt, for example. Yeah. Yeah, that shirt is uh, $9.40, mm -hmm. wow. and we sell it for $60. Landed price for jeans, $15. We sell them for $99. Nice. What did you mean when you referenced a pre-order campaign? How does that yeah, work? Yeah, so how we were able to bootstrap is that we launched these products at what we call intro pricing. So it's usually about a 50% margin at that point, and that really creates a sense of urgency within our customers. Our repeat customer rate is 51%. Wow. These people are That's waiting huge. for our products to come in. And how, does it, how do you execute that Exactly, I've never heard that. So we launch a product, we put out on email, social, everywhere, and then the customers go ahead and pre-order the product, and we usually deliver within six to 10 weeks. But I will admit here, COVID, you know, killed us. Right now with the COVID delays, we're seeing six, seven months. Ouch. Wow. And so how much do you have in inventory right now? 60 grand. Okay. But it's across a lot of sizes. And that's what makes it tough. How much cash do you guys have? Uh, maybe $100 today. $100? Oh. Yep. What? $100? I'm not, yep. We're oh. at the point here where uh, we just sold our house. Oh, no. Uh, oh. It's, it's uh, vulnerable and not fun to talk about, but we believe in this brand, like, more than anything. So far, you're losing money, right? Yes. Okay. So th this how much money are you make losing? on intro right pricing now, uh, is killing your margin. That, yeah, that, wait, Kevin, is, Kevin, how much money are you losing? Yeah, so I think we're about 150000 neg uh, negative this what year. What did you lose last year? Uh, 313. So you're 450 wow. in the hole, right? Yeah. Guys, something doesn't add up for me. Yeah. Right? Because your margins are like this. Yeah. And your shipping costs shouldn't be that astronomical. Right. What happened was is I also started spending in marketing. I hired a consultant. Uh, uh, that's you know, where you went team. wrong. Like, yeah. Exactly. So how what? much did what? you spend on marketing? I would say, you know, it was definitely over 30% of. Ooh. Oh, my God. So you have this rabid community that wants to buy from you. You don't need to market them. It was our attempt, and it was a wrong attempt, yeah. to try to expand and go further, but we were not ready for that. We will be ready for that, but not now. And that's why we need experts like you guys to come on board. The reason why the people are waiting six and seven or eight months is, like you said, 
it, it's a community. It's a it's a movement. It, it's funny that FUBU uh, forest bias has become used a lot in the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah, am I right? Yeah. And you are for us by us. You know, that, that's, that's who you are. Why are you trying to go any place else? If other people adopt 100%. it, it's no problem. 100%. But why are you going any place else? There's so many people that identify with you right now. Stop trying to be everything to no, everybody. You know, I, I, have to, I have to argue that, and it's because I don't want to be categorized. I want to fit in with everybody. You know, yeah, so, but listen, but, I'm listen, I'm pro-black, but yeah. never anti-anything else. No, of right? course. It doesn't mean that yeah. other people won't accept you. So yeah. I have to be I have to be honest, I have to give you my assessment of the business. I gotta try to find a way to help you. I'll mentor you, but Appreciate as it. for the business, yep. I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, I like to sit here and say I've done a million products, and I have, and I've done something in just about every medium, but the one thing I've really never done is jeans, clothing. I don't know how I could bring value to your business and help you out, so unfortunately, I wish you good luck, but I'm out. Thank you very much. I understand your mission, I respect it. There is such a need for this, but I think your problem is much larger cash-wise than you envisioned to be. Even when you came in here and we gave you the $250,000 for your stock, that's nothing. That's not gonna get you over the hump. It's just, it's a rough one. So I wish I could be with you, but I am out. I wanted to mention one other thing, and it's pretty important here. We're about to do a collaboration with another brand that does jeans, and they do 3D modeling. So what happens with that is that... Guys, guys, yep. don't do that. Don't do the collaboration? No. You have a fundamental problem. You don't know what business you're in. You have this community that's mm. like this. Golden. Your clothes are not the product. The community is looking to your, your clothes as their membership, as the way that they... Yeah. For them to say, we all belong together, that this is us. The clothes are secondary. It's keeping the community together that's important. But I have a fundamental problem as an investor because we're not on the same page on what makes the business. It's about, I want more inventory. I've got this collaboration. I've got all these other things. That's not the vision I would have, and it's your vision that's far more important. So for those reasons, I'm out. You're, you're not only all in, you're all in 2,000%. There's only one direction. Yes. It's up to the surface so you can breathe some oxygen. That is yeah. not a wonderful place for an investor to be. Like, right. I wish you guys the best of luck, but I'm out. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck, Thank guys. You. Thank Good you luck. very much. Keep on fighting. Thank you. Good luck, you guys. Let me give you this. Yes. <laughs> this is my number. So. Good Thank luck. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Thanks, All guys. Right. Thank you, guys. I think the sharks reminded us that our community is, is everything. It's not the end of Dapper Boy. And you know what? At the end of the day, we came here to build a relationship. And I'm so happy that we walked out of here with hopefully a mentorship. Yes. So that's huge. Yes. My name is Gayla Bentley, and I am the designer and founder of the Gayla Bentley Fashion Design Group. And I am here tonight to ask you for your wisdom and your experience. What about the money? And, good question, $250,000 for a 20% equity stake in my company. I am representing 60% of the American women that wear a size 12 or larger. You know us. We're your neighbor, your sister, your friend. And we are tired of being discriminated against, being forced to shop in the far corners of the department stores only to find clothes that don't fit and that we don't even like. I've spent the last 10 years focusing on building the Gayla Bentley brand, modern sizes for modern women, sizes 12 to 28. We would like to open our first Gayla Bentley flagship store in Houston, Texas, where I'm very, very popular. Like, Barbara, if you and I went shopping, how come we have to split? Oh, I'll see you in a little while. I'll go upstairs with my flashlight and try to find something to wear. You just stay down here on the first floor where everybody will help you. 
okay? This is why I wanna put these type of things on the first floor, integrate the sizes. I've dedicated my life to this for 30 years now. I've been in retail management with Saks Fifth Avenue. But you're only 25, how can that be? Oh my God, <laughs> darling. Anyway, <laughs> let, me, let me concentrate for a That's moment. Right. <laughs> Is it possible that larger sized women, and don't beat me with a stick, because I'm just trying to find out. Because there are four out. of them here. All okay, right. I'll try not to. Don't care about fashion as much. That's why the oh market my, doesn't service them. My, 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 my. Gala, beat him with a stick. Oh my God. Beat him with a stick. No, but Gala, I believe the market always serves demand. Yes. That's the way the world works. But there always has to be one pioneer. Is that you? It's going to be me with your help and wisdom. What? Are, can you tell us what these items sell for retail? Yes. As you this was sold for 470. 470. Yes. It's a luxury coat. Wow. It's Italian wool, very lightweight and very tailored. What is that costing you to make that the the jacket? One twenty-five. Wow. No. Okay. Wow. <laughs> hey. You are getting that at one twenty-five. That's Italian wool. Yes. It's a Even, beautiful jacket. Thank you. What retail stores are you in? I am online with Neiman Marcus. So, Gail, you don't have a store now. You only wholesale. I've only been working you wholesale. You wholesale goods. Yes. Totally. What are your sales today? My sales in the last six years are a little under half a million. Oh my goodness. 500,000 over six years? Oh no, a year. Oh, oh a year. Well, that, yes. Nice. Oh, sorry, We darlings. thought you were doing under 100,000 a year. Oh no, no, no. We couldn't survive. Look at us. We're very well, high maintenance. That, my next you question. You know we need more money than that. My next question was going to be, what do you eat? What do you survive Well, you on? can see we're eating carbohydrates. That's all we can afford. <laughs> 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 you know? Okay, Gayla, so, so I'm stuck on one thing. Okay. It, it, the skinny buyer that buys fashion, they won't put larger sizes in the retail. I gotta know why, why Gayla. Got, yes, can I tell you why? why? Yeah. They don't have any clothes in their luxury retail space. Over a size 12. Yes, I, I understand that. That's why this is such a great yeah. opportunity. But why don't they have them? Because it's not the luxury yes. look. When we are, is that true? Yeah. That's why we're tired of being discriminated against. Yeah. I they find don't that think hard to believe. No, it's true. To the world, luxury is not plus sizes. This is not luxurious? Not to them, not to the world right now. We need someone to be a pioneer to break through. I just want to ask the most important question, which is, Barbara, you have to be honest. Is this some good stuff? I happen to think the clothing's beautiful, without a doubt. And I think the attention to de detail uh, is usually very expensive to be done. Right, Damon, is her idea to now expand the line by opening up a flagship store the right strategy? It all depends. I don't know. I do believe that she can make a new space. I mean, that's exactly what I did. There was not a young men's market in 1990 until we made that so-called urban space. So she... But Damon, hang on a sec. If fashion is really about the brand, the designer, why go after just large? Why can't she go after the entire she, market? That, and that is a good point because that, some of these pieces I think would be attractive. Well, that's what I'm saying. Anybody. I Thank love this stuff. That. But it's a crowded field if you go out there and, and, and put those designs but to... But they don't want to buy the large Excuse stuff. Excuse me. I want to mention that I didn't mention. It's a $30 billion a year industry, and wouldn't you like a piece of that pie? Gail, you've done a good job of getting to this point. Thank Let's you. go back to the 250000 for a Thank second you. for me. Okay. Why do you now want to take 250000 and open a retail store? And as an investor, how would I ever get my money out of sinking it into one retail location? Because we're going to roll it out into others. This will be the first one, and the Simon Malls. This is the worst time in the history of retail. But let me tell you, since the first quarter, the wholesale went down. So I had to think quickly on my feet because I didn't want to stop my momentum. I said, why don't we take the front part of our wholesale showroom and turn it into retail? We're up 137% with my average sale being $1,000. Good for you. Why do you need 250000 from me? to open up a retail store. Why not just do it on your own? I, I go into the banks, so they're not in the mood to lend right now. I'm sure that's the case. Okay, look, there's so many different um, products here. And when I do an infomercial, I have one product right. in 30 minutes. When I see all the sizes, and now to couple that with retail, it's a very scary business for me, so Before I'm gonna leave go this out. to the experts here. Before you go out, yeah. which is, is that where you're going? I'm going out, yeah. You sure? I have to, yeah, because it... Let me just stop it, it, you a minute, okay? I've been watching QVC. There's some adorable little guy that demonstrating his clothing exactly like she's demonstrating, and yes. he's selling off the shelves. I have right now a home shopping network pursuing me. 
I did not want to sign any contracts mm -hmm. until I came to see you all because I need someone with your wisdom and experience to help make sure I make the right deal. And she's adorable. She's got that instant thinking on her feet charm. She's and I think I do great on that. We want to do the deal, but I don't want to do it and make sure I make the right deal. Kelly, I, lo I love the story. I, I have a huge amount of respect for the sales you built in your business, but bricks and mortar is the wrong strategy. I know enough to know that's wrong. For that reason, I'm out with a heavy heart. Okay, but I am flexible and I am open to what we think would be the best thing to do here. I think the home shopping is a good way to go because I think it builds my global brand with more people looking. I gotta get my name out but there. all roads lead to this fact. Yes or no, true or false, you are shut out of retail where 90% oh of God, clothes you are, are sold. you are really ruthless. No, no, I'm <laughs> telling the truth. You are really right. Thank you. Gayla, I cannot be the pioneer with the arrows in my back, all Zolling. right? Darling, it's okay. I'm out. <laughs> That's quite all right. Gayla, I was gonna say it before, but I'm gonna say it now. Thank you so much, but I'm out. You sure you don't want to consider going in half, Kevin? I can't imagine you can't sell this stuff on the air. Barbara, are you on commission with her? I mean, I've never seen a shark work so hard to bring somebody else back in. I love this lady, and you're not giving her the chance, and you guys aren't married to heavyset ladies, the truth. He's on his third, fourth, fifth, the trophy wife or something. What does any of this okay. have to do with making All money? All skinny. Do so right. What? Yeah. So, so are you talking about? Because because about? Because so are you talking about Damon's <laughs> trophy <laughs> wife or Kevin's they trophy all wife? Have them. Yeah. So what does that have to do with making money? Puppies. Because she's not on. listening. Here's an opportunity in an area that you can do well with. Open your ears. I'll put in half the money if you can get this clothing king and tell them, give them one more reason to go in with you. Three sharks are out. Barbara has offered to give Gala $125,000, which is only half the money that she's seeking. Gala must convince Damon to put up the other $125,000, or she'll walk away with nothing. Damon, may I ask you a question? Yes. With the success you've had with your clothing line, you have a built-in clientele for the women that wear my size. It'd be such a natural fit for the two of us to do business because you already have the distribution and the power in the industry. And coming out of the gate, this is not just a great opportunity, it's an extraordinary opportunity for hit, to hit this out of the ballpark. Let me, I jotted down some notes. You have to convince me to fall in love with you and then after that, you have to convince America to fall in love with you. Don't lose this opportunity. You promise that you will I not promise. blow this. I promise you. I promise you that. You couldn't get a more loyal, hardworking group of people than we are. Here is, here is my proposal. I would want to go partners with you in the company, so it would be 50%. For the 250000 it would be contingent on us getting a deal with the women's house, which are many of my friends. I know Barbara wants to be in. I find that there is no need for Barbara in this deal. How nice. But I do value the fact that I would have a partner with skin in the game that does know women's fashions, uh, eloquent female like Barbara can tell me it's crap or it's not. Yes. So Barbara, are you in on it so I know what's going on? Absolutely. Okay, let's discuss this. I want to remain in creative control because I know and believe what the women want, and can we look at 45%? Keep in mind that normally I ask for 51%, so the reason why I'm asking for 50% is so you have creative control, we make these decisions together. That is why I did not make it 51%. We have a deal. Good. Oh my God, fantastic! <laughs> Now you can do as much touching as you want. Oh. Barbara, this is so exciting. Oh, are you crying about? Oh, we're crying. Huh? What a nice come team sit, you have. Oh, come you guys are that family. Thank you so family. much. I guess we can pick up our signs and go home now. <laughs> Let's go eat. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is a stylish way to show your school spirit.
Very good. Oh. Hello. My name is Ashley Jones, and I'm from Virginia Beach, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the owner of Tones of Melanin. T-O-L. I'm seeking $300,000 for 5% equity into my business. Hello. So, Sharks, for years, thousands of students, faculty, and alumni from historically black colleges and universities, also known as HBCUs, have been underrepresented when it comes to fashion. They're tired of a dazzled t-shirt and polo being their only option for years. Tones of Melanin is here to fill that void. Tones of Melanin has combined streetwear and collegiate wear together to create its own genre of fashion. To date, we have over 40 different HBCU licenses. What makes us so unique is that we come from the community that we serve. Tones of Melanin has become bigger than just fashion. We've become the hub for all things HBCU. So, Sharks, who's ready to change collegiate wear forever? Give it up for my band! Woo! <laughs> Today, in front of you, you have some of my signature items. Mark, you have our reversible basketball shorts with pockets. Ladies, like we that. know that we have to have pockets in all items. So if you turn that thing inside out, it's a whole nother pair. I like it. Thank you. Right here, we have our Winston-Salem half-zip windbreaker. In front of you, Mr. Wonderful, is our reversible satin jacket. So if you unzip that, it's gonna turn into a whole nother side. Lori, you have our other windbreaker. It's a full zip. It gives you a, a blast from the past, a 90s feel. And Damon, you also have our reversible jacket from my alma mater, Norfolk State University. Nice quality. How much does it cost you to make and how much do you sell it for? The jacket that you have right there, uh, we get it for 28. We sell it um, on our site for 110. We sell it to the department store for 56. Uh, the reversible shorts right there, we get for 20. We sell it to the department store for 48. They sell it for 100. Um, our reversible jackets, we pay $30 for that. We charge 165. How did you start to do this, and, and what's your background? So I designed from early high school into college. It became a side hustle. I began designing for every organization on campus. And I seen there that nothing looked like the things that I was designing. So I decided to start my own brand. At the beginning, I was doing Greek apparel, and then I decided to make HBCU apparel because I seen that there was a bigger need in that community. And how many HBCUs are, you know, historical black colleges, universities, how many of those exist? Depending on the person, some might say 100, some might say 102. And you have 40 licenses already yes. in existence, so that's great. You have almost half of them, right? Yes, um, but the thing is, I've gotten my, um, our license for everybody that allows it. The other schools, they don't have licensing programs in place. They um, don't have licensing yes. programs in that place? That might be an opportunity for you right there. Absolutely. So. A very big, the number one shoemaker in the world has just invested, I think, a couple billion over 15 years to HBCUs. Yes. So this is a very, very hot and fast growing area. I tell you what gets me hot to trot is sales. Yes. What do you got? <laughs> Uh, to date, we made 3.3 million since. Whoa. Whoa. That's a period of time. <laughs> since 2017. So, what have you sold the last 12 months? The last 12 months, we're at 1.4 million. Wow. Can you walk me through this calendar year sales and potential profits, um, and this, how they break down online versus retail? Okay. Um, this calendar year so far, we made about 1.1 million dollars. That equals up, I want to say maybe 75 percent. Um, the rest are e-commerce. Uh, we're currently in Dick's Sporting Goods, Follette with services, uh, wow. 25 of the HBCU bookstores, and also on Fanatics. Literally two days ago, I got a purchase order from Follette for $973,000 for our fall. Wow. Wow. So, wow. <laughs> yeah. how exciting. So, are you going to make money this year? Uh, yes, what we are. What do you are. think you'll make? To date, we revenue, we have 343000 that we made this year from the one point. Uh, okay, one so you've profited about 25% so yes. far. You've got a purchase order for 973 Three coming in. Yes, sir. Plus, you've got all your other sales and then that are also, coming. Also, we have more department stores. How are you financing them? Um, we have a really good manufacturer. He allows for us to pay him after we get wow. our payment. Now, this is very creative, and this is what in our business we call the factories holding the paper. Yes. That's what we called it, right? And a lot of people can learn from this. So you were able to scale because he's doing that. So what would the money be used for then? Um, the money would be used for, uh, we're actually in-house. We have a five person team. So once they get here, we have to tag them all that. I want to go into fulfillment and having a 3PO company, tag it, getting it ready for department stores to make sure that that's well, ready. But you don't have to pay for a 3PL per se. You find a good 3PL, 
and then you send them the inventory, and then you only pay as they pick the pack. We would also use it for marketing. We've only um, spent $50,000 in marketing. But do you need to spend anything on marketing? I honestly believe that we do because all the stores that we're in, we're not even, we don't have like a key, a key place in the store. We actually wanted those other schools that we don't have licensing for, convincing them, hey, choose us. Yeah, marketing won't change their mind. The sell-through will. Okay, yeah. Are you running this yourself? Yes, I'm head designer. I'm talking to the manufacturers. This is your baby and you're running it day to day or is there a separate CEO or? No, I'm day to day. You are everything, every, right? Every head, every head. Ashley, I have to ask you this. I mean, your enthusiasm, your confidence is it's huge. It's amazing. Thank you. And amazing. Can you please tell us a bit more about your story? Like, where did this come from? My grandparents had one of the first African-American beauty supplies companies in our area. So I seen entrepreneurship firsthand. And then when I turned 13, when my mom worked for the Ford Company subsidiary, they left North Virginia. So I went into hustle mode and it was like, I could at least pay for me to go pay for lunch for myself. I can pay to get my hair done. So it just, it became se second nature, to be honest. You had to take care of you. Yes, yes. And it wasn't, my mom never asked this. I just wanted to help. Like, I know I can do this for myself. Like, I can handle this. You don't worry about that, mom. You're hot stuff. You have a lot of yeah, ingenuity. Yeah, yeah, my God. Ashley, you've got to be putting money in your pocket right now. Not yet. You're um, investing in inventory continuously? Everything is going right back into the business. You are not making a salary? You don't pay yourself anything? I pay myself next to nothing. I'm still trying to get... How I are you to, surviving? Uh, I have a great community. My family, my mom, she believes in me. That is really mind-blowing. Problem for me, I don't know much at all about this area. I am not really and never have really been much in the apparel world, nor in the sports. And, you know, I understand. It's, it's not really my thing. And so for that reason, I wish you good luck, but I'm out. I appreciate it. Thank you. You are on fire. Thank you. But this isn't a business I know a thing about, sadly enough. Ashley, I look at it as a inventory challenge because the bigger you get, the more capital you're going to need to hold all these different SKUs. And more licenses, more SKUs, more inventory, more capital. That's what I've learned about the clothing business. It's not a business I want to be in. I'm sorry. I'm out. Thank you. The challenge I have is I, I'm, I'm in this area in certain aspects. I, I either advise or own companies in this area. Eastman Golf and Actively Black, FUBU, and then another company you may know of, AACA, Amer Okay, African yes, American yes, College I'm familiar. League. So I, I would, uh, it would be challenging me to split hairs like this, and I don't think I would be giving you, doing a service, but I will give you one idea. Instead of having, trying to go to a lot of retailers, we've had one representative young man and one representative young woman at each school who are the official sellers of the goods, and they get maybe $1,000, $2,000 worth of product and sell it however they want, and they've been doing it like that, I would highly suggest you do that. But at this moment, it's a conflict for me. I so, appreciate yeah, your advice. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm out. Thank, Thank you. you. So, Ash, you're a superstar. You're a force of nature. You know your stuff cold. I mean, you didn't back down. You kept a smile the whole time. Nobody phased you even the tiniest bit. <laughs> and, you know, being in the business I am with the Mavericks, I know a few people that, you know, are excited about all this. So I'll make you an offer. We'll okay. see if you like it. I'll give you the $300,000, but I want 15%. Can we do 12? Done. <laughs> That was quick. Good job. You're the best. Thank you're you. the best. That's Thank awesome. You. I'm so excited. Yeah. Thank you. Excited, excited, excited. Thank you. Now go sell some stuff. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Make me some money. I made a deal with Mark Cuban, like one of the biggest sharks there is. I provide a beacon of hope. If I made it and I went to an HBCU, I'm providing the sense of hope for anybody that attended an HBCU.